This here is a 1978 Chevrolet Silverado, you know, three quarter ton, camper special flavor. It's got the big block 454, turbo 400 transmission behind it, and a whole bunch of other goodies. Of course, it doesn't run and been off the road for 16 years now. Let's see if we get this thing fired back up and back on the road. Well, as you can see, things are getting a little tight in Rusty Acres. I think the first thing I'm going to do is just hook a chain on this, drag her backwards a little bit so we can get around this thing and drink it up. There's a lot going on with this rig. Flat tires. Perfect. All right, go ahead, bud. Well, she'd been sitting here a while. This rig came out of Texas. You'll see here in a minute. She is rust free and I ain't kidding you. Ended up in Arkansas. Actually bought it off a subscriber. We had to use a tow truck to get it out of his backyard. I mean, it was in there and it was in there for a long, long time. Dropped her off right here in Rusty Acres and it sat again for a long, long time way past due to get this thing back on the road hopefully i was really interested in this one because my first truck ever was a silver rattle camper special same setup right here except mine was that kind of sunset or burnt orange copperish color and silver other than that completely identical well let's take a walk around this thing see what we're working with here let's start in the bed see if we got any engine parts or something like that a guy always likes to start in the trunk or the bed of a vehicle. It just tells you so much about the rig itself. We got an extra hood in here. It looks pretty decent too. Okay, we could probably use that on the ramp truck. That one's folded up like a cheap taco. I ain't kidding you. Okay, exhaust manifolds, that's great. Big old tow mirrors. Other than that, I don't... We got chrome bumper edge. That seems to be an extra too. Okay, okay, we'll take it. We'll get in here and look at this. Vice grips, actual vice grips. There's multiple indications this old gal actually did haul around a camper for many, many years. Well, you could tell because of the way that it is, but also things like this. Look at the tailgate. See this difference? That's because the tailgate wasn't on it for years. The tailgate was off so they could have that slip-in camper in place here. That works beautifully. Look at that thing. Woo! Nice looking hood in here. We got exhaust manifold, great. And the topper's held on with vice grips. So I apparently worked on this rig at some point. Real nice big vice grip up there. C clampage, I mean the free tools alone. I don't know what that storage or something up there. This must have been put on, I don't know, not too long ago. Probably just to store stuff back in here. I'm probably gonna take it off. There's there are some rigs that I like the topper shells on, kind of like lawsuit, but I just don't think it's it's working for me on this one here. You know what I mean? Here's lawsuit shell. And I just, I think this goes with the script paint and the color kind of matching in and everything like that, but not so much on the 78. Being that it's white, guy might slip it on that truck or maybe that furred. I don't know. You guys bleep bloop it down there in the comments. I'm definitely not going to get rid of it or trash it. It's in good shape. I ain't kidding you. Normally these are blued out and they're not because I'm looking at it. That's neat. Anyway, look at this thing. No 
rust. Nothing. Well, surface rust, but give me a break, would you? Look at this. Pretty awesome. It's going to have dual tanks. Switch, of course, won't work. That's just the way they came from the factory. Still got the silver rattle badges on. Front bumper's in excellent condition. Look at all the lichens. Black moss and mold. Oh, custom bow tie. What is that? Pine? Probably. Hood's been replaced. It used to be red. That's how you could tell that it was it used to be red, I guess. Some sort of big antenna was on this guy. At one point in like 17 different mirror setups. That's pretty neat. Here's the bed tie-in for the camper. This guy was serious. Oh, and we got the old rock shocks. Show you that here in a second. And there's the other tank. Tires are pretty good. You know, they might hold some wind. No, definitely, definitely not. Oh, we got airbags in there. And an exhaust tip dumped. I mean, it's as if I built this truck for me specifically. Another tie-in. Rear sway bar fillers, overload springs, airbags. Look at that rear end. Holy buckets. We got ourselves a tough truck here. Anyway, rock shocks. Look at this. Why didn't I see that earlier? See those shocks? There and over there. So when the bed wants to twist, it ties it together into the cab and slows that down. So you don't get, you know, this with the camper in it. This rig was set up to pull and tow. I'll tell you that much right now. That's been in the glass the whole time. That's how it arrived and I just left it in there. We got sticker ridge. What's this? 2002? It must have been in Texas. That's when it came out of Texas, I guess. And went to Arkansas and then it kind of just sat. No wind left in that tire either. No wind left in that one. This is cool. Normally these are gone, get stolen or ripped off. It's all there. Silver rattle badge here around the cab, but you get the camper. See, this is a teepee. It's camping because it's a camper special. 8,200 GVWs in this rig. Well, let's get in it and see what we got. <laughs> Whoa, really hot in there. Yeah, we could fix that. Oh boy, we got partage. Lots of partage. It is 6,000 degrees in here. <sighs> Smells like an anthill full of gin. Stings the eyes, actually. Woo! Okay. Wow, there is a lot of stuff in here. I'm just, I'm gonna have to bring you in here. We got ignition sticks. Glove box is stuck. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, this is cool. Derek, I really hope you like and enjoy the old Chevy. Thanks so much for buying it from me. I really do enjoy your channel and all the rescues. Really hope to see it go on the channel and possibly brought back to life. Keep up the good work. Murph. It looks like I bought it in January of last year. Wow. Okay. I'm going to get his papers out of here. We don't need to see his info. Get in here and look at this thing. Don't be shy. Get in there. We got stuff galore. This looks like a custom made boom boom receptacle CD player cup holder unit. Probably slid down. CB radio. Get out of the way. Factory option. Look at this. I can't believe it, but I'm looking right at it. See that? Boop, CB radio mode. Got the level stick on there for the camper. This thing is just a cherry. Uh-oh. Brand new set of piston rings in here. That's great. 
probably locked up again. Ooh, license plate cover. What are we, these brand new valve chromage? I'll be dead. Oh, well, that's been sitting, it's all faded out. All right, we've got new parts, I guess. There's something in here. Oh, heater core, so that must leak. Great. Headlights either need replaced or were. Here's your mirage. Yeah, that's that's gone. A couple visors. Custom lower door kickers. They ain't to this truck. But we got them. All sorts of stuff. I don't, I don't think I can. Yeah. What do we got? Carb cleaner and some oil. That's it. Rear sliding window. Let's get on the captain side. Power locks. We got the pouch. Ooh, we had the level front and backer too. I don't know what that is. Hmm. Look at the look at this. Get in there. Got the inflation data. Stuff like that. Oh, this wheel is disgusting. We got 96,000 miles, it says. Well, I don't know. Well, maybe. I'll be dipped. You know what? That might just be 96,000 original miles. It wasn't uncommon for fellers to buy nice rigs like this. They didn't want the whole RV shebang. They put a camper in the back and they only drive it when they go camping. This could be 96,000 miles. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. Bleep blooper. You know what I mean? But the armrest isn't worn. Look at the sill down here too. Normally this would be just blowed out, you know, from the feet dragging in and out and everything. It's not. And that looks like original carpet. Pretty good shape. I'm going to have to say that might be 96. We got a solid truck here. AC, of course. Dash isn't too terribly bad. What are the chances that visor has been in there the whole time? Headliners, you know, pinned up. Standard issue. I like that. We'll leave that be. Ah, glasses. Blow it out, though. Shoot. That's too bad. Well, the guy's going to get under the power barn here. See what we got going on. That's broken. There she is. 454 with the big of the blocks. Right there staring right at me. Oh, it's got headers on it. That's why the manifolds are in the back. That's a win. Oh, a couple of the bolts are backed out. Still got a quadra jet in there. Looks complete. I mean, at first glance anyway, there's some weird wiring and stuff like that. AC compressor's gone. Shoot. I need the ice cube juice down here in the south. And I ain't kidding you about that the least bit. Well, get in here and take a look at this too. Well, the old guy definitely sat parked up under some trees. I hope that didn't rust out in there. Oh, I might got lucky. But here we go. Dirt divers everywhere. They're kind of the mice of the north in the south, I think. It, down here, it's the dirt daubers, is what I'm trying to say. There's those headers, nice and rusty, but they're in there. Speaking of mice, I just, I don't see the wires chewed up anywhere. Forget the lid flip, they went straight to the chrome. So that's good. All the belts are on it. Still got the fan clutch, which feels really nice. Had the dual batteries. Ground. I bet it went over to here. Some sort of diffusilator. Oh, that went to the camper, I bet. So they ran some power off of this to back to there. You know what I mean? Painted the underside of the hood blue even. Huh. Interesting when they swapped it. Still got the original jack and the handles. And it burns oil like crazy, apparently. So that's good. Or transmission shift juice, not sure yet. But I think it's 
I think it's good. It's all here. Let's see if the carb's locked up. Can the fuel make it happen here? Make fuel happen. That's, oh, look at that. Custom spacer. Oh, yeah. We're good there. Huh. Wiper motor, everything is... Hmm. It's just like they just parked it. I don't know why. Well, I tell you what. My littlest human I'm responsible for, Bentley, wants to help out today. It's about 213 degrees Celsius, and it's fixing the rain here in probably about 45, 50 minutes. I think what we're going to do is hook a chain on this, drag her down the hill, get her in the pole barn, and we'll work on it in there. We have, we have the technology. We can do that now, you know. So we'll get the tractor and wrestle this thing around. Bentley's going to get in here and see how many of these tires will take wind. Might have to find some spares so this thing rolls and whatnot. Well, a little dude's probably going to jam on the brake pedal out of habit. So I'm going to pop this open, top her off with some juice. Can we get lucky and have brakes? <laughs> no. No, that's never happened before. But who knows? Oh, yeah. One million percent plum dry. That's fine. He's rolling down the winders, trying to get the heat and the smell out of there. Hey, you want to hit the brake pedal, see if it moves? Is it moving? All right. Well, keep pumping it. Pedal's not stuck. That's nice. Does it go all the way to the floor? Yeah. It does? Great. Well... At least there's some juice in there now anyway. Won't score up that master cylinder. That's good, buddy. We're not sure how, but this tire is actually taking a little bit of wind right now. Watch it be the only one that actually goes up. Are these all, that's a Uniroyal. This is a good year. This one looks like it'll probably go up. Maybe. I don't know if I got any more 78 lugs laying around. I could root around though, see. It's even got cruise control. This tire is holding there somehow. I'll be dipped. It might, it might just, you know, go down the road yet. Hopefully that one holds. I did find a tire. We got to use it up here. She blew it off the bead. So that ain't going to work. Jack this up quick, get this one swapped out. Wow. Not good enough to get her to the barn. All right, he's going to jump in and I guess only steer. We just tested the brakes, pulling it backwards more. And yeah, there's nothing. That's weird. Got this brand new bias ply. No, that's like 40 years old. But that's going to be the bumper. So when he starts speeding up on me, I'll just ease the three point into the front here. Should work pretty good. Oh, nice. Good find. Oh, it's ready to go. Cool. Keep that in there. We'll put that on later. You ready, bud?
Oof da me, this big feller fought us, and I ain't kidding you, but we got her in here, it took three or four attempts to get her lined up right. Hard for little dude to twirl on that wheel with these big tires on there without the PS pump, pumping and whatnot. Plus the wheel is slimy and slippery, and we gotta address that. Nonetheless, we got her in. Well, truth beyond went ahead and be told, my intentions with this rig is just clean it up bumper to bumper, and I'm going to be selling it actually very soon. If you've been following me for a while though, you know I've been having a devil of a time selling anything anymore. I just end up with a bunch of tire kickers and waste of time. Then I found Hemmings Auctions, and that's what I'm actually gonna be using for this and all of my vehicles going forward. There's a bunch of benefits to it. If you haven't heard of this, you should really check it out, honestly. You get a specialist that's assigned to you that helps you from listing all the way through sale. They write up your auction. It's a professional automotive journalist, does it all for you. They'll even come out and take pictures of your rig if you wanted to. Maybe you're still flipping the phone up, you know, or you ain't got a digital camera. They'll do it for you. Listings are only $99.95. And for me, my favorite part, all bidders are actually verified human beings and they're verified by credit card. So you're not gonna have people just bidding up your truck and then ghosting you like some other platforms I've been having issues with. So keep an eye out, that's where this is gonna end up. But first things second, you know, doesn't even run or move. Let's not get the eggs before the cart or the horses in the chicken coop or whatever. Keep forgetting them. This year you gotta pop the hood. Well, I'm rooting around in here. Bentley's actually gonna crack this cab open, start pulling all of the stuff on the inside out, vacuum it. I think he wants to clean the glass up and stuff like that as well. So we'll cut him loose on that. He's got a table here set up. He's gonna be putting everything out on that. Where I'm gonna start here is, I just wanna make sure this thing even turns over. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna get down there on the crank, throw a wrench on that, try to twirl this thing over. Try to get 360 degrees out of it. Make sure nothing's binding up and doing that stuff. I just finished vacuuming and it looks pretty good in here. Well, I'm going to be honest, right to your brain. I can't get my arms in there on the crank or nothing. I've been fighting and fighting. The fan shroud is just affixed in such a way, guy can't get a wrench in an arm in there. What I'm going to do is try to go right off the old charging water bolt here. Sometimes a feller can get enough tension on the belt to spin these around, but this is the big old 7.4 litre, so I'm not quite sure. We'll just have to see. Here we go. Here we go now. Slippage. I think it just rolled over. Yep, there it goes. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah, it's spinning. Here's the valve train, valve training in there, snap a lid. Well, that's great news that this old big block still turns over. Frankly, I'm a little surprised to be honest, because I know for a fact that those 16 years, it sat outside the entire time, especially here, no cover at all, not even from trees. Moisture usually creeps up the old exhaust or down the fuel make it happener and sticks something up, but I guess we got lucky in this case. Oh, let's see what the shift machine says on the blood stick here. 6,000% empty. There's nothing there. That's good. Pan gasket's probably gone. I'll leave that up to remind me. We got to do something there. Engine earls. It's got earls in it. Hmm. 1030. It's got viscosity. We could fire it up on this. No problem. And I think it's even eh, maybe a quart low, something like that. 
we're seeing some indications here. Quite frankly, I'm a little nervous. We got a box of new rings that was in the passenger seat. We got homemade funnels everywhere. The only thing we haven't found, well, I guess there was a quart of oil behind the seat. So it's probably a drinker. You know what I mean? Smokes a little bit. Heavy smoker. Goes to bingo. That's what I'm saying. The engine. Potentially, hopefully not the reason it was parked. It's just the rings were completely shot. But pretty nice rig to just park up, that's for sure. Yes. Well, it's time we run a sparkles test on the rig here and move on to see if it's got any lightning coming out of the lightning whirler there. Very specific reason I picked up this battery. Well, you know, it was on sale and had the go handle. If I'm being honest, that's why. All right, side post laters. Not used to this rig. Oh, we're missing a side post. Well, go find a bolt and some washers. Looks like the charging whirler's been nascar on. The line comes right off of it, straight over to the battery. I got a weird filter and a hose, all sorts of stuff in here. All right. Fire test. Commence. Well, I wasn't ready yet. How about now? Still not ready. Okay, here. I don't hear any sizzling. See any smoke. I will just sit here and drink it up a little bit. You know, get the sniffer. Get the sniffer working in here. I gotta take some sinus medicine, don't I? We might be good. We might just be good. Well, we got a fresh battery in her. Let's see what we got. Volts, gauge moved. Clock ain't moving. Of course, that's, it's rare that these even work, ever. Lights. Oh, we got domage. What do we got on the outside? I see a tail light. I'll be dipped. Both of them. Yeah, this is Side markers? And this headlight. All right, we got one headlight. Hit the dimmer switch on the floor with, with your foot. See if that does it. There you go, we got both. I wonder, there must be an issue with the headlamps because there's like eight of them over here for some reason. I wonder if we got, we got wipers. I'll be dipped. We got a stereo. Come back now. CB works. I can't believe it. I mean, lock doesn't work. That's incredible. I'm excited to see if that cruise actually still does something. Well, so far the electrical system on the truck seems to be in excellent condition. Pretty much everything is working with the exception of the power locks, which is probably just a switch. I haven't even tried the passenger side yet. Try the door lock on the passenger side. nothing over there either oh well next of course does the key do the key thing to the starter does the starter turn the engine over but before I do that I'm gonna get in there and disconnect the fuel line from the tank I don't know what's in that tank the gauge is saying a quarter tank of fuel hopefully the gas gauge works but if there's still gas in this that's that old who knows what we got right so let's not pump it in right now so I'm gonna disconnect that quick we'll try the key Somebody's been monkeying in here quite a bit. I got a quick disconnect right here. I can snip that off and then it won't suck late from the tank. The other thing that is normally an issue, any make and model that's this old with the dual tanks, see the Chevrolets and the GMs, they're right on the dash here. Normally they're gonna be stuck in the LH or left-hand side because that's the driver's side. You try to switch tanks, there's a valve underneath the truck Normally doesn't work or get stuck in between or whatever else. Probably not even going to flip that switch 
and just continue to use the left hand take. I can't believe the CB radio works. <sighs> Got the pump disconnected. Let's see what happens here. Yes. Hey, that sounded even. Listen now, lean in. What I mean by that is the gallop of the pistons. Usually if you got a piston down or something unhappy, it'll kind of, well, it gallops, you know, like a horsey or a pig or whatever, you know. This one's pretty even across the board. Starter sounds healthy too. It's engaging right now. And then it's coming back too, though. It comes back on its own. Thank goodness, putting starters in with headers is not fun. Well, we can move on to sparkles. We gotta get lightning down the lightning hose to go into the sparkulator to make the fire in the piston. So I'm gonna go try to find a blinky light. That's the cheap, easy way, you know, cause I'm lazy. We'll not even take the cap off the lightning whirler or anything. We'll just start there and then work our way backwards. With point systems, I like to start at the coil and the points and go the other way, but HEI, I mean, pretty sure the Titanic ran a couple of those and well, they still work. That's, that's what someone told me. So Bentley was standing right here when I was cranking it and he said, hey dad, when you were turning the engine over, I heard a zapping noise and I just had him go in and crank it. I heard the same thing too, every now and then, a zip, zip. So the lightning hoses are leaking somewhere. They're grounding out on their way. That also means I know we have spark at this point, but we should just, you know, what did that one guy say? Trust, but verify. Since I'm not alone, I don't need to use my lone wolf. He's gonna crank it for me. We're gonna watch that light bulb. Hopefully it flashes. Go ahead. Yep. Okay. Nice. We've got, we've got the sparkles. Like I say, one or some or all of these lightning hoses are bad. Could have some mice chews in it too. That's a really common reason. They lay, oh, look at right there. This jacket, completely split. So that is probably what's jumping right there. Who knows? I don't know. Well, that's gonna have to do it for today. We're running into town to take the kids to a movie, but we'll be back on this bright and early tomorrow morning. Right now, everything is going great. Little man's got it cleaned out, looking pretty good on the interior. The electrical in this truck seems to be pretty good. The engine is not stuck, finally, for once. It's rotating, and we got sparkles. Tomorrow, we'll throw some fuel at this thing and hear it run. It should sound good. Headers, straight pipes, glass packs, oh yeah. Well, good morning, and welcome to day two. Hey, I left the battery on last night. She's hot. You know what I mean? But good news, rig didn't burn down and take the shop with it and <laughs> everything I own. That's, that's pretty neat. Well, let's jump right in, throw some fire maker on. It's not mouthwash, okay? Let's throw some fire maker in here, see if we get this thing to make some noise. This is approximately 53.642 to one, two strike and gasolines, oils, gas, you know. I'm gonna try to fill the bowl here if I can, or at least get a little bit of something in there. You never know. I've had a couple that they'll fire off and then for whatever reason, they just sit here and they're gonna run for a minute. Plus I wanna see if the accelerator pump works. Might have to pick up a rebuild kit for this Quadrajet. Although it looks pretty good. That was way too much. Perfect, okay. Well, I'm gonna jump in, twirl on the key. Let's see what happens here. If the battery's not dead. There it goes, yes! It's idling. Something sounds good. Oh, that's the fuel pump, I got that on hook. A little bit of valve trying noise, but not bad. I'll be dead. It's not even smoking. 
How is it not smoking? What, what were the rings for in the seat? There's not even a lick of smoke coming out of the thing. Valve train is ticking away. Of course, it probably hasn't even built oil pressure yet. The thing is alive. I can't tell you how much of a relief that is because I got big plans for this thing, like I was saying. It sounds pretty good. Actually, a lot quieter with the headers, the straight pipes, and the glass packs. I thought it was going to be a lot louder than that. Oh, that's fantastic news. I think I'm going to do that again just, you know, because. Fill in the bowl again. Way too much down the yap. Oil pressure here says almost 60. Charging. 13.4, 13.1. Wow. Yes, we got a runner. We got a runner. Oh, well, that's it. I'm sold on her. Now that I've heard it run, it sounds pretty darn good. I'm gonna go ahead and invest the time and money and finish this thing out. So, new sparkulators, lightning hoses, cap, rotor, ignition module, probably. Let's do an oil change. We gotta grease this thing up, check the rear end, service the transmission, continue cleaning it up. Still gotta pressure wash it, bring the paint around wipe up the glass. We got a lot of work to do. And I got a big surprise coming on this rig. I'll tell you a little bit more about that at the end, which means I got to have this done today. So yeah, that's, we're gonna, we got, we're wasting time. You know what I mean? Got a little man jammed in here. He's gonna take all the lightning hoses off for me. Lightning whirler cap coming out. Oh yeah, she needed replaced. Oh yeah, that doesn't look too good. Yeah, all these are running. Richer than Oprah. Bentley's pulling out all the old ones for me and then I'm gonna follow behind, throw in some new AC Delcos. They're definitely fouled up a little bit. The nice thing so far is they're all even and consistent in how they look. So basically the truck's just running a little bit rich and probably been a while, you know, since they have changed. We're just looking for mechanical damage or any signs of one running super lean or anything like that. Have an intake gasket leak or something like that. But so far so good. What do you got, three left? So this is interesting. Bentley just told me that uh, seven was finger tight and he couldn't get this one down here because of the header. So I went and got a open end, which you got to sneak in there to get to him sometimes. And lo and behold, number four was just flopping in there as well. Just finger tight, back right out. So there's no way those two pistons were leaking wind. We might be gaining some HP here, fellas. Quite a bit of them. One more, then we can reverse her the processes. Welcome to Derek's non-fictional storytelling time. Big blocks, love them. Putting in sparkulators, mm, mm With headers, uh-uh, nope. But you learn a few things after you do this 6,000 million times. One of the easiest ways I found is take a regular, you know, sparkulator socket. It normally looks like this. And see, I've cut this one down feathers so you could slip her in behind the header. The secret there is you can't use a 3 8 drive, it's got to be a half inch so the porcelain of the sparkulator shoots right through the end. Then a guy could take a 13 16 you know, and do the thing. You can also use a cat's paw in some situations that works and I also have this 5 8 that's ground on both edges so it's sharp. You can get this under the header and actually tighten your spark later that way. I try to keep all these things handy because the guy's usually farting around with a big block somewhere or another. Sparkulators are in. Gonna get a new Akasas coil put on top. Cap, start running the lightning hoses down. But first, I gotta get a new ignition module put in. This little magic doodab right here is what makes the GM HEI such a legendary, iconic ignition system. 
It has all the magics inside of it. With the HEI, you hit it with 12 volts, done. Simple, easy, reliable. Basically, never have to service the things. Compare that to the Ford NeverSpark or the Mopar electronic ignition. Nightmares, right? And I'm replacing this even though it works. Here's why. Some of you are going, why? Well, here's why. Reliability. You know, if I'm selling it to someone else, let's just make sure we can get all we can out of it. I also just wanted to check it anyway, since I got it in my hand. Let's put a new one in. You really only have to service these every 50, 75,000, 100,000 miles. You know what I mean? This one looks pretty darn original, if I'm being honest. One of the only reasons GM HEIs fail is people don't put the silicon or lithium grease, electrotronic grease or whatever, but underneath of the module here to insulate that thing. This just sits in the base of the distributor there and gets cooked to death. This one had it on there, which is probably why it still works. I'm gonna go ahead and put in this Acacel Performances unit. But again, if you replace these, do not forget to put this on there. And they should be maintenance and worry-free for however long you got the rig fillers. And I ain't kidding ya. There we go. In we go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Boy, I'm just getting more and more limber, aren't I? This one's looking good. You can change how quickly or how slow your advance comes in just by changing these little springs there. Super easy. Okay, everything's lubed up, greased, plugged in, ready to rock. Guy got in a hurry, made a mistake. I know. It's late enough in the year, I can make my first one, okay? When I ordered sparkulator hoses for this, it was for a stock rig, of course, and it had manifolds, so they're straight boots. That's not gonna work. So I grabbed this uh, MSD Street Fire kit. This is a backup for Independence, which also has a big block. But you gotta go through and crimp on all your boots and cut them to length. So we're gonna end up, I guess, with a custom set of wires on the old rig. And it's a perfect time to put some protecting boots on this. Uh, these are from DEI, protect the boots. Uh, these withstand heat up to 1200 degrees direct, otherwise, uh, the titanium ones are 1,800 degrees. Some of these are pretty tight in here, and the boots were really, really close. So while I got just an open end, it's a perfect time to slip these on. Just go right on nice and easy. And this will protect us from burning any boots. Okay, one done, 78,000 to go. Great. Just like that. Broke my step. Hmm, great. New ignition system is all complete here. Not only does it look way better, it's going to perform way better as well. By the way, this works great sliding them boots on, you know, when you're making up your own lightning hoses. This actually stands for water displacement on the 40th try. So since it displaces water, once you lubricate your hose, you don't have to worry about it being in there. It ain't gonna hurt the electricity flows or anything like that. In fact, it's gonna keep moisture out. So I always use that. Let's go ahead and lift this thing up now, and get the oil changed on this. So hopefully we can get this thing idling here in a few minutes and run it through its paces. Well, since we got her up in our teeth here, let's just, let's take a tour. Let's gander it. First of all, I had some sort of push bumper on this thing. Someone just, you know, gas axe them off. That's fine. I have a hunch this is an oil cooler because I could still see the transmission cooler lines going to the rad. Beefy front sway bar. Yep. Got an oil cooler on it. This thing is just a monster. That would have been added in. Someone's been in the transmission. What were they doing? I don't know. It's got the original flex plate anyway don't know about the rest this doesn't look like it was changed based on all the grease and whatnot well wait i'll be dipped 
It's got a reman transmission right there. I'm looking at it. Sorry, I didn't mean to get so excited and yell. That's fantastic news. I wonder when that was done. She's the 400 anyway. Custom exhaust. Look at this. To get the bend, they cut it, bent it. See how it's not all the way through? And then welded it to get the angles. That was done back in the day, and I ain't kidding you. Got gyps on here. No tips, but they are turned down. Look at these heavy-duty bags on here. I'm probably going to forget, but we should throw some wind in those. See if they do some rear sway bar. This thing is an absolute beast at that pulling. We got the tank switch later up in there. We're not even going to attempt to switch them. Non-serviceable U-joints, we will grease that. And we'll also pop this open. See if we got any juice back in this bad boy. I already went ahead and shot the wheel cylinders down because you probably know what's going to end up happening there. Great. Just great. The lack of rust kind of scares me. Kind of scares me. There ain't no rust. Little tiny bit right here. Normally this is completely gone. Floors are solid. Inner rockers are solid. This side doesn't have that rust at all. Pretty sweet truck. Bed looks great. Got a really heavy duty rear bumper set up here. Look at this thing. Got angle iron all the way back here. Channel iron. Yeah, that bumper ain't going nowhere. Somehow these tires held air overnight. Oh, I mean, this one, of course, definitely should, but still pretty surprising. Both fuel tanks are in here. So let's go ahead and service this transmission, even though it's a reman. Let's put a fill tray in it. Let's uh, change on the oil and get the whole bottom side greased up. You know, can we get grease in there and here and there and, you know, here and there and here and over here and probably skip that one. Nope, there. You know what I mean. Yeah, I do too wonder what Mark Chestnut's doing today. I think he's going back on tour. Could be wrong. Nope, definitely not. Looks like we got an AC Delco filter in here. That's good. That's good. The old rig was carried on. I am the karate kid. No, nope. barely put my boots on. Oil change is done. Got the fill tray in. Of course, that's a wex. Write the date or the mileage on them. How many times I got to tell you? People need to know what's going on around here. Moving on to the shift machine. You know, the go forward, go backward, select automatic. Auto magical movement device, you know. I'm just tickled chrome. This is a reman. But we got a pan gasket leak, clearly. Anyway, last time I did one of these, I dumped 48 gallons of ATF on the ground. Let's try to avoid that this time, Derek, okay? Auto magical shift machine. Do you have any gears left? Why didn't you have any juice in you? It's probably burnt up. Oh yeah, she was low. Real low. There's none juice in it. None juice in the shift machine. Cork gasket. It was a reman, but it was some time ago. New one's got rubber. Contents of the pan here look great. I mean, there's just a tiny, tiny bit of clutch material, but that's gonna happen on a reman, you know, or fresh rebuild. Valve body, everything else in there looks fantastic. Gonna clean this out quick. New fill tray, pop her back in. Well, here's where we're at. Oil change is done. Got a new Wix fill tray in there, of course. Got the transmission pan cleaned out, looked really good in there. New filtre in there as well. Went ahead and flushed the lines going to the cooler and everything like that. 
90% flush, whatever in the torque converter is in there, but the ATF that was left looked really good, didn't smell burned. Also went ahead and put about a half a tube of grease in this thing. Everything that I could find, I just, <laughs> you know what I mean? Got her in there, pretty good. Before we bring it back down, while well, it's up right in my forehead here, you know, thereabouts, let's go ahead and bleed on these brakes. There we ain't got, there's no pedal. We got no pedal. So little dude right now is climbing up in there in a the ladder. He's gonna pound on the pedal. We're gonna do it the old school way. Starting in the uh, drinker side rear, work our way around. I'll probably throw up another ladder somewhere and man the juices and the wrenches. Oh, this is gonna be fun. So we got back blood so far. Those cracked up here. He's starting to get pedal. Getting quite a bit of air out of this guy. Yep, go ahead, 10 and hold. I can actually hear the air moving in the line. Hear that? Lots of air. Okay, let's go again, please. Yep. This side, unfortunately, completely rusted, rotted off. Try to get it out of there with some heat, see what happens. Vice grip, might have to replace the caliper, but hopefully not. Well, we're onto a fuel system here so we can get this thing idling. Like I was saying, now normally I'd run a little pony tank. In fact, I've got one sitting right here, but I got to thinking, I've got a huge, crazy plan for this truck. And that involves needing fuel capacity. So I'm gonna jump right into using the tank in this thing. I am gonna put a filter or two in line first, just in case it starts pulling a bunch of crud and stuff like that. We can kill the engine and we'll drop the tank and flush it, or if, we, if it's really bad, we'll replace it. But I went up here on the Q-Jet first, and this is something you guys always gotta do when you're working with the Q-Jet. Start there and work backwards with your fuel trays. This is the one that I pulled out. Looks good to, you know, the eyeball. But look at this. It's plugged, that's what I'm saying. New one. There we go, we got the flows. So be sure to check that if you're not getting fuel flow, running funny, et cetera, et cetera. Start right up here. So what I'm gonna do is just plug this line back into the tank, prime it again, See if this mechanical fuel pump is working. Hopefully it is. Bada bing, bada bang, or the booms, or whatever the saying is, we got fuel. Getting her down? Okay, I'll go grab a Wix fuel filter. We'll get this line plugged in. Well, if you live in a hot climate, or you've got a fuel line run in a not a very good spot, you know what I mean? A lot of OEM applications run the fuel line between the charger and whirler right smack up against the block and the head and then over, or they come across a valve cover, things of that nature. Maybe you're running your own fuel lines, you've got a hot engine compartment, you've experienced vapor lock and it's one of the most frustrating things ever. And it always happens when you're at a green light. You know what I mean? It's time to go, no, nope, vapor lock. I'm gonna get ahead of the curve. It's pretty common in big box for sure. There's a lot of heat under here. And this one is not using the OEM steel line that comes up between the charger whirler and the head, thank goodness, but it is just a rubber line laid across the valve cover like that. So I'm gonna use this DEI vapor block fuel line split sleeve, and this is what it comes like in the package, but I use this all the time. So I've got sticks laying around, they're usually this long, cut up. All you gotta do is just roll your fuel line in here, peel this tape off, stick it down, and you're good to go, and that's gonna save the headache. Fuel gauge shows about an eighth of a tank, but Bentley's over here pouring in five gallons of 93 non-ethanol in it and see if we can mix on this a little bit. Even though that's a 16-year-old gas, I would much rather have that today than fresh, you know, 10, 15% ethanol fuel, that's for sure. It stayed a lot longer. Hopefully this will mixelate, it will rock the truck around a little bit and give it a chance here. Well, here's the fuel line set up. Changed it up a little bit, instead of just laying across here, soaking in all that heat, moved it up in a Adele clamp. Nope, she's a singer, Adel. 
So now it's not resting on anything. That'll help. And with this, I think we're going to be fine, not have to worry about heat soak at all. Time to get oil and the gear selector juice back in this thing. For the engine all here, just going with the old T4, 1540. Whoops, just spilled 50 gallons. Now she's going to smoke. <laughs> For the Adif juice, I'm just going to use the O'Reilly House brand. It's like seven bucks cheaper these days. By the way, I took this and filled the oil filter first, of course. Put that up in there. Then take whatever snake oil you want to use. You know, I think I used Lucas for something this time. Put that into here first, shooked on it. Then you got your full gallon back and it actually, see how nice it poured out and you're not just pouring out straight honey. Yeah, nailed it. I still haven't heard back from Larry Bird. What's he even doing? While we're waiting for the juices to settle to check on them, going through and replacing every single vacuum line in here. I'm just pulling them out, handing them to Bentley, He's picking the correct size, measuring, cutting, and putting back in. Tedious, but a lot of these lines just are so cracked up and split. You know, we'll never get this thing dialed and tuned in right with vacuum leaks. Well, let's give her another rip. See how it's liking all the mantenances. All right, go ahead. It's pulling fuel. Go ahead again. Might got some wind in the fuel line. Let me pop that out quick. Okay, go again. Okay, again. 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 Ah, it's really not wanting to pull fuel and utilize on it on its own yet. I got so much, I got a full dirt dauber in my retina. Okay, let's just, let me sit and think for a minute. Wet my back neck, I'll be back. Well, I thanked on her. Where we're at, I believe, is a needle and seat. They're seating hard. They're not letting fuel go in, fill the bowl so the idle circuitry is not idling because I can run it all day long off my little makeshift bottle here. So what I'm gonna to do to try to prevent cracking apart this Q-Jet right now, no one has a kit in stock, believe that. No, nope, I can't either. I'm gonna take this total engine tune up here by Barryman, pour it in this bottle. This has got gasoline and some two-stroke oil in it. Mix this up good, and I'm gonna put this through the vent tube Fill the whole bowl of the carburetor in it with this here. This stuff dissolves carbon, gum, grime, grease. It just, it's, it dissolves stuff. So I'm going to fill this up. We're going to let it sit for 15, 20 minutes. And then I'll wrap on it again with my carburetor adjustment tool, also known as a Leatherman. And then we'll be good. Believe you me. Guy got a bottle half a jug down, you know. While we're waiting for that to soak, I'm gonna pour in this radiator relief. Uh, DEI also makes this stuff. What's nice about this is it works really good with water or any sort of glycol 50, 50, 80, 20, 73, 36, 40, 60, 88, and 22. I don't know what your mixture is. That's what I'm saying. It'll work with them all. And then of course, top her off with some coolant here. Get up them mountains! Peak! I don't think that's... I don't think they have a jingle, but that's just what came to my mind, I guess. 
This was uh, about half full, but keep in mind we haven't opened the thermostat on this bad boy yet, so we really don't know what the story is. Okay, I'll keep this handy. So far, nothing's leaking though. And the fuel fill tray is looking clear. Don't believe me? I'll show you then. This is coming right out of the tank. You can definitely tell we mixed on it. We got three quarters a tank of fuel now. Bentley, I think, went a little, little wild with the price of fuel these days, but that's okay. We got her mixed up nice now. And hopefully once we get this issue resolved, she'll chew on it just fine. Bring the thunder. Well, maybe. There we go. All right. Yes. Got a pretty strong mixture in there. Might need some wind too. Try it again. Accelerator pump seems to be working. That was a pretty greedy stout mixture I gave her. I'm talking, you know, bar close time, last call kind of mixture. So it's going to stumble and bumble here for a minute while it chews on that. And then it's going to start pulling in that fresh fuel and hopefully smooth out a little bit. But hey, it sounds great. A little bit of smoke in here, but that's going to be that concoction. You know, two cycle oil and the fire and stuff like that. We're going to see if we can get at the temperature here, get the thermostat open, make sure everything is circulating, look for leaks in the radiator, find a weaknesses in any of the hose, and then also got to check out that heater core because we have one in the front seat, which I don't know, I'm hoping it was just random. There's also a box of rings, which clearly was not needed, so I don't know. Charging, incredible oil pressure and slowly coming to temp. Everything's looking good. It's circulating. Sounding good. Time to check the ship machine out here. We need that if we're going to town. Ooh, brakes feel really good. Reverse. There it is. Solid. Neutral. Drive. Boom. I'm gonna cycle these a few times. We'll go out and check the blood stick. Oh, sounds good. Oil pressure pegs when you rev on it. I can't believe this radio works. Need a windscreen though, don't we? Gotta welcome it to the family here with a little bit of an Italian tuna. Right down the yell. If I can even reach. Goodness. those glass packs. Good evening! Holy! Now it's just smoothing out. We're getting close to driving this thing. Well, Bentley's worked very, very hard today, so he's got the first drive. I know it's got brakes, so he's good. Oh, hold on. I forgot to take the thing. Back up. First. All right, bud, come on out. First time moving under its own power. 16 years. <laughs> well, 
What do you think, bud? Uh, cool. cool. Decent enough? Well, we got her washed up, pressure washed. We got all this surface rust in here we need to address. We got wheels we want to clean up a little bit. All of the trim and everything like that. I'm going to be using some quad steel wool and getting in here and working that in. And that's what it's going to look like. However, this was done with Bentley's idea. Do you want to explain what you got? Yeah, um, we got like a polisher thing. They squirt the juice and you polish it. And we put like an SOS pad on the end to put that stuff on it and get it wet. And it so out. he said, why don't we just use some steel wool? So we cut a piece of steel wool to the sticky back. You sprinkle a little bit of Ajax on it. And that was literally 15 seconds. And, you know, it looks a little bit different. So I'm going to cut you loose with that, let you do the big parts, and I'll do the small stuff. Well, the old truck looks 393.6% better. I mean, really brought it around. While this is sitting out here drying, I'm going to address the tire issue. I got some other tires, different bolt pattern on the wheels, of course. We're going to keep these old school Three quarter ton wheels here. Them's the 16s. That's the tricky part getting tires. But I got some, so I'm gonna pull these off one at a time, dismount, mount, and balance, and hopefully those will last. 19 months later, I got one on, mounted, balanced. That was a bear. First of all, those Yokohamas are just hermetically sealed on these little wheels. I have never seen such a thing. Then, mounting them up on these that are eight and a half wide, bead blaster and prying and pushing and fire and flames and, oh, well, three more to go. Great. Getting these zeroed out is not easy, I'm gonna be honest, but we're getting there. These have lots of tread left, by the way. Nice tires, actually. Geolander, Yokohama. Well, the Yokohama says, mounted on, wheels cleaned up, all that stuff, but you can't see nothing because it's zero dark 30 outside. So I'm going to call it a night and we'll see you guys once again, bright and early in the morning. We'll be back on the truck. Got her fired up, pulled into the garage this morning. Still a little bit cranky on the cold start, but that's, you know, big block life. We could probably bring it back around with some fine tuning on the fuel, make it happen or on the old lightning where they're there. I am officially behind my schedule. I should be on the road somewhere right now. But we're going to go ahead and continue to work on this guy here this morning. A couple more things I want to do to this before we call it good for now. And it starts with getting rid of that sticky steering wheel. Now this old wheel here, guy might be able to bring him around, run him through the dishwasher a couple times in the wife's of Walmart, you know what I mean? Baby wipes work really good. Even some Ajax and just some SOS pads. but. I don't have time for that, and this one is also showing a little bit of wear. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this new one in. Of course, I got this through LMC, and it comes with all of the horn hardware and everything there. Horn works. <laughs> oh, that one. In with this guy. Well, 
Well, that looks about 38,000% better. Now, like the guy was saying, I am a topper feller. I like these units. This one's in really good shape. Going to save on it, but it's not going to stay on this truck. I think this truck is going to look a lot better without it. That being said, I'm going to transfer this over to an old Ford F100 that I'm working on. And I think this will look great on that truck. So let's take this for its first official drive down over to Rusty Acres. We got a hood to unload, a bumper, some miscellaneous stuff, get this topper off. See what we got as far as a bed and its new look. Well, we're doing the thing. It's driving, second gear just kicked in. The PS is down. I threw a bottle in her, but she ain't really wanting to pump late, making quite a bit of noise. But we'll see if we could bring that back around. Hard to see. I do have that little straight six down here in an 80 or 82 or whatever year that was. I might grab the pump later off of that guy just to have a spare or replace this one. Don't know if I got the time today at all yet. <laughs> this is the hood that came out of there. Jackpot. It's in really good shape. A little bit of a dent there how it was stored in the truck, bouncing off that bumper. It doesn't even need a crease kit in it. Got the 454 manifolds, some nice tow mirrors, original jack, and handle off of GM. Yep, that's great. The rest of this just needs swept out, cleaned out, but we'll have to do that some other time. Now we'll back this in down there somewhere against the furred and get this topper off, huh? It was a family event, but we got it. Look at this, the Ford looks better with the topper. And look at this Chevrolet now. <whistles> this truck looks better without it. Like a lot better. You think so? Yep. Yep. Gotta run a broom through here. Doesn't look like it's been rusted on though. Remember, there's been something in here this whole time. No fifth wheel plate or goose, which is nice. The bed's not cut up there. Well, let's take a test drive. We're gonna burn on in the town, grab some non-ethanol fuel, and a couple more parts for the old rig, see how it does on the road. Well, we made it in the town to the parts store here. Truck is doing fantastic. What a transformation so far, but I'm still not done. There's a lot I wanna do to this truck still. Yes, I'm still going to be selling this on Hemmings Auctions, but I wanna go for a little trip with this thing first. And by little, I mean, well, across the country. And Bentley's going to be coming with me. That's coming up next, so stay tuned. Is it going to make it? I don't know. We're going to find out. Thanks, guys, for watching. Appreciate it very much. See you next time.